hello, hello everyone. In between all these premiums and stuff, I figured I would feature this pretty fun game that I played in the Nicholas, as well as highlighting the fact that today we I will be casting the finals of the Kings of the Sea 3 Cup. In fact, uh, today on Saturday at 16 CST, uh, we will be playing the semi-finals and tomorrow on Sunday 16 CST will be playing the final and this is pretty much the biggest uh, World of Warships Cup that there is the biggest tournament in terms of quality of teams in terms of top teams attending I think in general in terms of uh, amount of teams attending it's it's just the biggest cup not just in EU but pretty much all over the world in terms of size and quality of competition so if you're interested in watching some competitive world warships you are more than welcome to tune in on my stream today i'll put uh, in i'll put the link to the stream in the comments so you guys know where you can watch it now the reason i highlighted this game was because as i said i've been returning to a bunch of the older ships and i've been having some fun in fact i'm going to be featuring a cleveland game very soon as well uh, and I've just been enjoying these mid-low tier ships a lot as of late. Now, um, on the on the Nicholas, I actually quite got quite lucky on this game uh, because I was matched up against uh, tier four and five. And uh, well, it, as of late, it does happen a bit more frequently that you get good matchmaking on tier five and six. Uh, I feel like the the issues that arose from the bugged or previously awkward matchmaking has kind of been fixed well not entirely you still often end up as the bottom tier but i feel like it has improved a lot in the past maybe past two weeks or so it feels like t5 and t6 has gotten a lot better now you still end up with the horrible matchmaking every now and then and it's just as awkward as it was before but i do feel that it's not quite as frequent as it used to be so that's obviously a good thing Moving on to Nicholas. Well, first thing I do is, of course, uh, spot enemy Izakaze, who was firing, I think. And he was sailing way too much in a straight line, which you obviously never should do. He did smoke up to save his life, but I, of course, smoked up myself and just hammered him as much as possible. I see a phoenix quite far away, and I'm already switching to AP here, because he's giving broadside. And that's something a lot of people tend to do. Uh, they underestimate the AP of the Nicholas and there's a good reason why they do this because on the Clemson you actually have such small caliber guns that your AP doesn't really do anything going pure HE on the Clemson is pretty much the best option unless you're right point, point blank to the enemy but on the Nicholas you trade uh, that those faster guns for the much meatier guns of the Nicholas and you can actually quite comfortably punish ships with the AP on this ship and well, the HE of course deals more damage. Mutsuki is here. Now, a lower tiers, he honestly, in a US versus IGN matchup like this, I have no issues just parking here and shooting him. If he tries to shoot me, it's fine. He can he can shoot me all he wants. He's not going to deal much damage. And because of my positioning, he's going to have an awkward time torping me. Now, the reason for this is the island right next to me. You see that I'm reversing into cover already. If he were to torp me, the only way he could hit me would be if his torps managed to go through this island. So that's why I was in a perfectly safe position. There was no need for me to rush him, there was no need to go and torp him or anything. I knew that my gunpowder was enough to kill him. His torps were spotted heading down south, so I know he wasn't torping me. And here we get to show. Uh, Dana can display show for us just the power of this AP instant citadels. You can do this against Omahas, Murmans, well any Omaha type ships really, uh, free, any Royal Navy cruisers, uh, Aobas, Furutakas. Furutakas are harder because they are so well armored but even they, if they get broadside at this range you will easily citadel them. So that's why I'm happily sticking to the AP and of course uh, if I hit the citadel I have a high chance of breaking his engine so that's why I'm happily sticking to this as well, not just for the pure alpha damage, but also for the chance of breaking his engine, which would of course stop him in his tracks. Not being very lucky with that right now, but then again, uh, Royal Navy cruisers do get citadeled a lot, so I guess they are a bit more resistant to losing their engine to that kind of thing. Switching to HE when he's angled, but in general you see no one is really shooting at me. I'm not in a smoke, I'm not in any cover, but they're not really shooting at me. The Dana is turning his guns, what looks like 
towards me and it seems like he finally realizes that he wants to kill me but it's far too little too late and the kuma torps finish him off now i kind of want to push down the middle i mean pushing up north these ships are sailing away that's something you have to keep in mind if you want to rush into enemy ships in, in very short range torpedo or if you want to torp uh, ships but your torps are very short range um say trying to chase ships that are going away from you is always going to be extremely awkward and uh, well it even if you have long range torps torping ships that are sailing away from you you need to get so very close and even then they have a, such an easy time dodging them because they're already sailing away from your torpedoes so if i wanted to torp these uh, battleships up north i would optimally i would first sail to where, where my, my Wyoming is on the minimap. You see where my Wyoming is? I would first sail to him, and then from that angle I would torp them, because then I would get, would, would get broadside, and I would also be slightly in front of them, which would be the optimal position. But sailing right north here, they would just sail away, and it would be awkward as hell. So I go for uh, an intercepting course on these ships in the middle instead, because these ships, as you can see, are sailing from the south to the north. If I push right across here, I kind of intercept them, all of them, which is exactly what I want to do. Especially because the Nicholas is kind of the definition of a YOLO ship. It has an absolutely absurd amount of torps on both sides of a ship. It's got six torps on both sides and it's a massive amount of torpedo power. I use the upgraded torps because they have an additional uh, half a kilometer of, of range and when you're so so uh, limited on the range I prefer this especially since sometimes you get situations like these you come around the corner but the battleship is sailing away from you and honestly at higher tiers doing this is not advisable chasing a ship that's chasing away from you trying to get the kill on him it's just so very very awkward i mean it, he can deal so much damage his secondaries can shred you so doing this kind of thing at let's say tier 7 onwards is probably not going to work out very well even at tier 6 uh, if you're against something like fuso or new mexico the amount of firepower he can bring your way can be very nasty but at these low tiers you can kind of get away with it mostly because the battleships are so slow that your torps have an easier time of catching up. Second of all, your torp reload is so short and uh, you have so many of them. So the Nicholas kind of gets away with doing these really, really YOLO-ish moves. You notice that I didn't shoot all my torps. I, sailed one, I saved one volley of torps here. And that's of course because I want to uh, get closer before I land them and I want to spread it out between his repair. So he's flooding, I think. Did he repair it? No, he's still actually flooding, that is good. But I still need to kill him, and flooding will not kill him in time. So I close the distance. You notice that I keep, try, keep trying to uh, stay behind him. I don't want to sail to his broadside, because then he can bring all his guns to bear. So I'm kind of forcing him to turn, um, turn all his guns to hit me. And the more he turns, the more speed he loses. The more speed he loses, the closer I get, and the easier of a time I have to hit him. And at this point, uh, well, he's flooding, so he can't, his speed has dropped, he's repaired it now. But I only really need one wallet to finish him here, and he's killed off. But that's kind of something you want to keep in mind. If you're chasing a battleship, keep in mind which way his guns are, are aimed, and then try to go for the opposite side. Uh, yes, he will. If, if he wants to shoot you, he will have to turn his entire ship around just to hit you. And that makes him very predictable. In fact, I'm going to show you guys a better example of that later on. I don't bother shooting the Mayogi, instead shooting the Hosho behind him. Because, well, the Mayogi is uh, grounded and I already got torps on him. And the Hosho is a much more interesting target because my HE does uh, pretty much raw damage to him because he has no real armor. Turning and dodging the shells, of course. Should never sail in straight lines. Uh, battleship AP can deal very surprising amount of damage to you. So I'm constantly weaving left and right as I'm closing the distance and shooting the Hosho. Sadly, I'm not able to finish him off. I don't know if my torps are gonna kill this guy. Uh, whatever, dropping my torps that way. They will be reloaded by the time this Congo comes shows up anyway. Uh, and my Ogre is pretty much dead, so I ignore him and I uh, get behind cover and sail north to fight off the Congo in this case. And torps are landing. He's, he eats three of them and he gets killed. That gives me my confederate as well. Dropping some preemptive torps on the Congo, and I'm smoking up. Let's see. 
see if I could get some damage on him and I kind of want to force his repair as well. Now the reason why I'm doing this is uh, shooting HG on him like this is because I want to fire and I want him, sorry about my phone, I want him to repair this fire because if he repair the, repairs the fire uh, then flooding will be permanent. I did get in fact get a fire on him and he instantly repaired it even though he's gonna dodge the torps. But now I know his damage uh, cooldown is off. And you notice I used my left side torps, but you can see his guns are turned to his right side. That means if he wants to shoot me now, he's gonna have to turn hard left to bring all his guns to bear. And if he turns hard left, that means my right side torps will be able to hit him. So now when I pop out of the smoke, you see, he's turning hard left exactly like I said, like I predicted, and I'm turning left as well, so I can use my right hand torps, which I had not used yet. So, based on which way his guns were pointed, I was able to predict exactly which way he was going to turn, and I was able to fire off my torps before I died and actually land them because of this. So that's something you really want to keep in mind when you're rushing any battleship. Always keep in mind which way his guns are pointed. Anyway, with the amount of damage I did in this brawling mayhemish seal clubbing game, 153,000 damage in a Nicholas game, we obviously ended up winning it. Uh, 2,000 base XP, which is pretty hilarious. And I mean, looking at the <laughs> detailed report, 13 torpedo hits. But even then, uh, my torps only did 89k in damage. Look how much damage my guns did. 44, well actually 45k plus the fires, so more than 50k from the from the guns alone. So you, you should, even on the low tier ones, do not neglect using your gun power because it is very much a strength. Anyway, that was all for me. I need to get prepared for casting the Kings of the Sea. So I hope you guys enjoyed this short vid for today, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow or tonight if you tune in to watch the tournament.